Good afternoon. My name is uh, Miguel Duarte. I'm um, a software engineer working for Red Hat in the OpenShift virtualization networking team. Um, OpenShift virtualization is the downstream distribution of uh, KubeVirt. And I work like closely related on stuff about SDN mostly, like uh, we try to push more features from the user to the network. And the interesting thing about this talk is that it has absolutely nothing to do with that. So it's going to be, it's kind of challenging to me to be on this forum speaking about something that I really don't know that much about. So I hope you have fun. Uh, and I hope before anything, I need to make a very special call out to a colleague of mine, to Doug Smith. He helped me uh, preparing these slides. So yeah, Doug, thanks for that. And let us begin. So the goal of this um, presentation, before anything, is to kind of uh, figure out ways or on how to get traction in your uh, projects and how to get them to be uh, more successful than they currently are. I'm not claiming to be an expert on any of this, so I'll take this with some care. Okay, so first thing first, like, uh, what are we going to be talking about? Like, uh, the first question we have to do here is, like, uh, what does success look like? And um, second one is, why is this important? Why is exactly, like, things like uh, having your features be used in the wild, uh, have running successful communities, why any of that is important? Then finally, we'll try to get to the point of uh, understanding how to get like from point A to point B, where point A is whatever state your project is, and point B is, well, let's say, successful project run in a successful community. And we'll finalize with some conclusion, conclusions where I will kind of highlight the most relevant things of everything I just spoke through. So first question we should be asking ourselves before this is what does success look like? And so you should be laughing, but that did not work. But point is, I th I'm not a Swifty in any means, but I guess we can all agree like uh, this woman is pretty successful at what she does. And I don't understand how, nor how she got here. I'm not a fan again, but definitely she is. So let's focus on something a little bit, little bit more uh, tangible, I guess. And one metric that is kind of relevant, I don't think it's the uh, actual correct metric, but it's a metric that is very uh, easy to find online. So here it is. And I'm get putting here like a chart of um, the number of GitHub stars on a bunch of projects I collaborate with. So. Wow, I should have asked this before. Pointer? Nope. Pointer? Pointer. So you, we have uh, whereabouts is one in the bottom. Uh, NM state is also one in the bottom. Um, okay, so NM state, what it does is give you like a declarative way to configure host networking. Uh, whereabouts is uh, an IPAM CNI plugin. I guess most of this is not known to you, so I'm just throwing out words, it don't have, doesn't have to make much sense. Uh, this one is, uh, what is this? Oh, Oven Kubernetes, another CNI plugin. Again, I'm, I work in network stuff. Uh, this one is multi-CNI, so it kind of gives the ability in a Kubernetes cluster for users to have more than one networking interface. And this one is Kubert. Pretty much allows uh, the users to run virtual machines inside of a Kubernetes cluster. So pretty much they do different things. They kind of all interact with one another. That's why I, I work on pretty much all of these. But um, looking here, we can see some of them are more successful than others independently of uh, what they do. And we'll kind of see why. But this is like, let's say, an artifact for the real metric that, you, that m I think matters. Because what I think matters the most is users. Like, that's the currency of the success of uh, either your project, feature, or community. It's the, the amount of people that actually use that on a day to day basis and care enough about uh, your project. 
So now, why should you care about this? Um, it's pretty much all about growth. Like, you will be better at communicating uh, stuff, things like management and prioritization. If you are running, like, let's say, an upstream community, all these things, no matter how good you are, you will get, get better. Uh, like prioritization, we can all agree, for instance, that we all have more things to do than time to do it. So it's very important for you to be able to like look at your entire backlog of things independently of what you do and spot out exactly like these three things are the most important ones I should work with. I'll work in these two if um, I have the time to and these 20 will never be done in the history. Um, you'll learn to m kind of manage um, people involved in the project and communication. Like communication is like paramount in pretty much every a aspect of life. Uh, and for instance, like, I don't know, I think I'm pretty good at, well, pretty good. I'm not bad at communicating, uh, but there's, communicating is a two-way street. It's like um, you have to listen more than you speak, otherwise nobody will understand one another if everybody's too busy talking nobody's listening and i know for a fact i'm really bad at listening like i half of the times i'm listening i'm kind of uh looking for an excuse to stop listening like oh this is wrong so uh well i did not understand this part so i will not reply things like that i know i'm bad at that half first step to uh like dealing with something is recognizing there's an issue there so uh, i guess that's important but the point i'm trying to make here is these things are uh, incredibly demanded soft skills that will make you um, a better worker in whatever it is you do. Like, I think we can all agree that communication is paramount in, I guess, a lot of works or pretty much all of them. Not all, but uh, quite a few. Management, same thing. Prioritization, like it's a, a, let's say, necessary skill in everyday life. And all these things will pretty much uh, translate into like the, the, the size of the, of the bag of money that you'll get when you look for a new job. So by improving yourself with the, all these soft skills, you will be in a better bargaining position to look for uh, your next job. So I think that's a good reason for um, doing anything. That sounded too capitalistic. Sorry for that. Now, getting from A to B, first thing is like make it incredibly easy on every step. Take, um, remember I'm speaking from a software, um, software development perspective, but keep that in mind through the entire presentation, please. But first thing, make it easy. Like you cannot assume anything about your users. You don't, cannot expect them to understand, let's say, the basics of networking because some of them will not but they can still be helpful members of your community and help uh, getting the point across. Uh, then make everything extremely easy to try. Like uh, how many of you uh, went to a GitHub repo because you found something online that said, this is the answer to your problems. You started through the readme and on the, sec the, like the, step on the second step failed and you would have not the patience to go and debug that. It's like, okay, so this project is dead to me forever. This happens a lot. Like you need to make things incredibly easy to try out. And that will relate to the second step that I think is very important. Then don't depress, simplify. Like you should keep things incredibly simple. And because you're not trying to uh, show people how smart uh, you are, because people will not spend the time to understand what's behind it. They just want like an easy fix for whatever problem they want to um, achieve, to resolve actually. Now, getting the word out. This is about you um, showing to the world, to the, the, to, the, the, to the outside world, what exactly is this thing about. So the first thing is, we can all agree that the first imp impressions matter. That's pr probably the thing that will stick in your reptilian brain when once you meet someone is your first impression. And it's very hard to overcome that first impression barrier. So in your project, good read me. I'm actually linking here something. 
well, it's the only link. I don't know why I pointed to it, but yeah, this link is something uh, that uh, I don't recall his name, but it's about something called readme-driven development. I think we've all heard about like test-driven development, where it says that you should write your tests first. Well, this person advocates you shouldn't write tests first. You should write your readme first. That way, that will force you to think as a user before you actually write your API or anything, and that will kind of put you in the right track into, let's say, a user-friendly project with a decent uh, user experience. Uh, because we can all agree, for instance, it doesn't matter if you wrote the perfect library, but you just don't tell people how to use that and nobody will understand it. So mm, you need to get that right. Then communicate using either social media or blog posts or whatever. You need to get your thoughts out uh, in so people can understand them. Because let's say, for instance, a feature, sometimes a feature usually is like an interconnection of uh, different components in different projects. So it's not something that's immediately clear. And to configure something the right way, you'll have to have um, some knowledge of a different set of projects. And it's incredibly value it provides incredible value if you have like a blog post explaining from end to end to a user in layman terms how to get the feature configured and working successfully. This is an incredibly important point. Then bring your ideas to the communities, like to all the communities. You cannot, if let's say you have an API, you are consuming APIs from different projects, right? And go to those, to those um, community calls and engage with them and understand, join their meetings, sh share your idea, get feedback from them, and uh, everything will work better for sure. Also, speak at conferences like this one. It um, will help out getting the word out. On, uh, people will get to know your project better. And, uh, well, for instance, you'll kind of overcome stage, stage fright and uh, lose your sense of shame. So that's good. Finally, not finally, I have one more slide after this, uh, but you have to engage everyone. Like, as I was saying, usually, like, there's a bunch of communities involved in this, and you should engage in all of them. Join their meetings. Uh, treat your users with respect, because, again, they're the currency that you should be kind of catering to. So any interaction you have, you should value that. Like either it's in a GitHub issue, you have to figure out, like you have to be aware that this person actually took the trouble of going and reporting that something is not working the way they expect it to. Probably their assumption was wrong, but probably they're telling you how a person that doesn't know about this particular, or is not like, uh, let's say an immediate expert on the topic, thought about this. And this probably means that you have assumed everything wrong on when you were designing it. You thought like an ex a subject matter expert instead of a regular user. So probably you got your API totally wrong. So engage with everyone, comment on their issues, treat people with respect, and the most respect you can treat them with is with your time. Uh, listen with everyone that's engaging with you, because if you do this correctly, you might get them to be your contributors. And this is an incredibly powerful tool because you have, I'm calling this compounded knowledge within the community, but this pretty much means that it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, apes stronger together. It's a little bit like that. You won't have time to answer everything, but you if you foster, like say, a sane uh, community, your contributors will help you with this. They will take the word out. They will explain to other people how this is done. And as a personal, um, so where I work with, I quickly found out that the best way I could help my users out was to make sure that this one engineer understood really well what it is that we do, why we do it, and how to configure this. Why? Well, this guy would communicate this a lot better than I can. So by making sure that he understands this, he will like kind of train the broader um, community a lot better than I. So take this into account. Um, again, join community calls of the projects that you are consuming. 
because this will help you get feedback on your ideas and um, and keep yourself informed of the new things that are happening in the ecosystem that you are part of. And finally, this one is the last slide about this, is it pretty much starts a lot before you start. So this is a little bit cryptic. What, what I'm trying to say here is you need to uh, fulfill like uh, a necessity in the market. I don't mean specific market, but uh, like people want to do something and you need to understand what it is. So you develop something that will actually address those needs because that's the way you will get people to use uh, whatever it is that you're, that you're uh, developing. And for that, you need to engage. You need to like reach out to, um, to these communities to learn and figure out what it is that people are actually uh, asking for. Because sometimes people don't actually s voice, I need this. You need to f understand like the, let's say the underlying text of it. Then test your ideas first, like start with a, proof, uh, with a proof of concept, experiment the more you can, show that to everyone, join their community meetings. I know I've said this a lot already, but yeah, join their things and show them your ideas in the wild. Show them what it is that your project actually achieves. Get feedback from them, learn from them. This is not, let's say, time um, thrown away. Even if nobody likes it, well, this is a good learning experience that you should value and a lot. And finally, uh, never guess. I mean, you'll have to guess every now and then, but if you have to make like a sequence of guesses, stop doing that. You're probably doing everything wrong. Go back and engage with people and ensure that you have valuable and actionable feedback. Uh, okay, we're arriving to the conclusions part of this, and uh, I will just quickly summarize uh, everything we went through here. Uh, first thing, like users are like uh, the currency of the success of your feature, project, community, whatever it is. Treat them with respect, cater, empower them. These people will eventually become your contributors if you do your uh, job in a proper way. If you succeed, in engaging them the right way, they will be your allies in getting this correctly done. Uh, soft skill growth, like you're pretty much like building your own brand, you're investing is your, in yourself. I mean, this by itself kind of pays out. You're investing in yourself is very important. This one is very important. Like user experience is a lot more important than performance. Like, at, this only matters in software, in the software world, I guess. But uh, we sometimes try to do something incredibly performant. But if you do that with a bad user experience, nobody's going to use it unless they really need that extra bump in performance, which is really not that common. Um, the last one I'll actually say first, and it's about documentation, like, treat your documentation with the respect it deserves because this is like the entry point or the gateway that your potential users and communities will uh, learn about you and and you really need to get this properly done and if you have to choose between documenting your poorly documented project project or adding a new feature that's also going to be not properly documented go and document your last one like try to reduce, um, let's say, the technical depth in the documentation side, because that's important. And finally, engage all the adjacent communities. I know I've said this again, and um, that's pretty much it. I have nothing else. <laughs> I'm wel I welcome any question you have, so fire away. Okay, so remember what I said about product market fit, like making sure that uh, your product or your feature actually uh, is solving something useful for people. So the top one, 
Qvert, it allows you to run virtual machines inside of Kubernetes clusters. So yeah, uh, Kubernetes kind of won the, let's say, the, um, the cloud orchestrator landscape. So it totally won. It took everything by storm and it won. But people still using, are still using virtual machines. They need a, if they can have like a single platform to run everything, just by the fact that they, ha they usually pay licensing costs to, um, and they want to run both things. I mean, it's like pure economics. You either pay two types of licenses or you just pay one. I would choose to pay one, pretty much everyone does, and that, that is why everybody uses this. This is like the, the sweet thing right here. We can look at the ones in the bottom, and I'll take NM State for, for instance. The product market fit for it is also incredibly uh, important because what it does is provide you a way to configure, like you have a declarative way, you just specify, I want my network to look like this. And the system will either bend over back backwards to make that happen or fail. But you don't need to go and uh, do IP link, add whatever, you don't do any of that. You just provide a tiny YAML file and say, I want a bridge, I want this thing as its port, I want to configure this thing and it will just happen or fail. But that's what it does. The thing why it is not that used is something that usually it's not an end user that will care about this. It's like the uh, administrator. Again, this is like my interpretation of it. I guess like, let's say the user base is smaller, like for every end user that you would cater to with the one above, uh, this one is just like one admin. So if you administrate like a fleet of things, there's like one admin for that, but there are like, I don't know, thousands of users. So that's kind of the way I see it. You've asked me for anecdotes. There's actually something very interesting about this project, the NM state. So for instance, the first, uh, let's say the first user of this was uh, over. It's like, a virtualization technology started somewhere in 2010 or something, around circa 2010, that did like virtualization, typical traditional data center um, virtualization. And it used NM state. That actually, they were the people that kicked uh, off the project, so to speak. It was written in Python and int interacted with uh, something called Network Manager. So keep this in mind, Python, Network Manager, and add one user over it. Eventually, OpenShift wanted to use this, like this solves everything that we need. We want that. Oh, but it's written in Python and it's written in Network Manager. We don't have that in the nodes that we use on the OpenShift cluster. At least the Python thing, we really don't. We cannot use that. No problem. Engineers rewrote the entire thing to a different language to make that available in the um, in the OpenShift ecosystem. So by doing a couple of moves, which pretty much involved like rewriting the entire thing from scratch, they were able to kind of uh, be make themselves available in a totally different ecosystem that is well currently, let's say. It's not that it's demanded, it's that the other one was totally retired and relevant. They managed to uh, keep themselves relevant and by catering to, let's say, a broader uh, user base. Um, this one in the middle, for instance, Maltus, more of the same, like uh, gives something that uh, not many people do and does it simply and does it well. So I guess that's it. Any other questions? Sure. In upstream, repeat the question. Sorry, um, if I see the question is if I do see like um, a motive for do traditional advertising in um, upstream projects. Well, y I'd say like TV ads and uh, Web ads would be something that makes more sense. Like, and I'm not sure, but probably like, I kind of recall like on 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 a s uh, Stack Exchange and something like that. You sometimes see some stuff like that, but at the end of the day, I guess that people want stickers and things like this at conferences, and they want these kind of stuff. So, I think. 
that's kind of uh, rebranding the traditional advertising for, let's say, for software communities. Or at least that's the way I see it. So in a way, yes, but it's already being done. I guess that's my answer. Thanks for the question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. So the thing, uh, the question is, um, yeah, handling negative feedback. So I would say the first thing here is, I mean, it's hard to hear negative feedback, totally, uh, but it's a lot worse if you're not even given feedback in the first place because you will keep continuing whatever it is that is causing the negative feedback. So having it is uh, clearly good now how to work with that honestly i don't understand the, the specifics of um of your of your question like uh, i'm not sure if it's like your set of tooling that is overreaching or something like that uh but probably trying to simplify and like make it do less it's kind of i know more is more and less is not more but sometimes it is it's a complex and weird situation to be, but try to start with a subset of it, probably. Like, choose, like, uh, on, on all that feedback, probably there's somebody saying, but this part here is really interesting. Focus on the but, like, uh, silver linings, I guess. Like, there's always a positive thing in everything. And if someone actually, if you can find something to salvage and focus on from that negative feedback, that's where you should be looking at. Or at least that's what I would do. Simplify. Do less. D instead of it doing like... Um, for instance, there's a f I guess there's a reason why there's just like uh, one Swiss army knife and everybody calls the Swiss army knife, not like a Portuguese army knife. Yeah. It's like that's the one. Nobody needs anything else. Yeah, do have a knife and a spoon and do a really proper spoon sometimes is what people want. Welcome. Um, anything else? Okay, I guess we're done. Thank you.